Edward, later known as Edward the Martyr, was born in around 962, when his father Edgar was 19 years old. At the time of his birth, his father had been King of the English for around three years. King Edgar died in 975, when Edward was around 13 years of age. The young prince was crowned King of the English, but his reign would last a little less than three years. In 978, he was brutally murdered at Corve Castle in Dorset, when he was about 16. He was succeeded by his younger half-brother, 12-year-old Ethelred. When Edward's father died, many noblemen in England did not consider Edward to be the legitimate heir, and the crown was contested. This happened because, although Edward was acknowledged as King Edgar's son, his mother was not the king's lawful wife, Elthrith, who had been crowned an anointed queen. A number of very powerful noblemen supported Ethelred, his son by the queen Elthrith, as the natural heir. Let's see where he fits in in our kings and queens timeline. Here he is, coming to the throne just 91 years before the end of Anglo-Saxon rule with the invasion of William the Conqueror in 1066. Edward's father, King Edgar, who was the great-grandson of Alfred the Great, had irritated England's nobility during his 16-year reign by forcing monastic reforms on them. He'd also dispossessed minor members of the nobility and gave their land to the church. The crowning of Edward was seen as a continuation of Edgar's rule. Very few charters survive from Edward's reign, compared with other kings of that era, but it's generally thought there was a breakdown of royal authority during this period. When he was 16, less than three years after ascending to the throne, Edward was visiting his stepmother Elthrith and his half-brother Ethelred at Corfe Castle in Dorset. As he was led on horseback into the castle's courtyard, he was pulled from his horse and stabbed to death. There are theories that Elthrith, his stepmother, was behind his death. She stood to benefit, as Ethelred, her son, would be crowned king on his death. Mysteriously, Edward was buried quickly and his killers escaped punishment. Edward was venerated as a saint and a martyr, hence his name, Edward the Martyr. After he was buried in Wareham, he was reburied in Shaftesbury. This shrine was destroyed over 500 years later, during the dissolution of the monasteries in the 1500s. His bones were found again in 1931. Tests carried out later that century confirmed that the bones had marks consistent with Edward's reported injuries. Neither the Anglican or Catholic churches would take the bones. So in the 1980s, he was interred in a Russian Orthodox shrine in Surrey. It's quite a sad ending, not only for a king of England, but for a young boy. He lost his mother as a child, lost his father when he was 13, was crowned king the same year, brutally murdered when he was 16, buried, dug up, reburied, dug up again thanks to Henry VIII, lost, found again, then turned away by the Anglican and Catholic churches, and eventually buried in a Russian church in suburban Surrey. Let's hope at some point in the future, Henry VIII's bones aren't dug up by future anti-reformationists and forced to undergo the same fate. In the next episode, we'll cover the life of Edward the Martyr's half-brother and successor, Ethelred the Unready. Please remember to hit the subscribe button below to receive an alert when we upload our next video. You can also help us to continue making these videos by supporting us via Patreon using the link below.